who's from Colorado. Cool. There are three chapters in Colorado. They're fairly strong. One is very strong. There might be even more right now. We're trying to build them up. It'd be a great idea for you to reach out to the chapters and uh, see if there's one located next to you. Um, and it's and for any of you, let me see. Let's how am I? Uh, am I sharing my screen? Yeah, I think I am. Cool. Let's see. Let's share this. So go to natchiorg slash chapters. Natchiorg slash chapters. If you had a like a a pen and a a notebook or something, you can write these things down. But our chapters are really strong in some areas, especially in Colorado. So um, you can just scroll down. Oh, we've got two. I thought we had three or four. Sometimes they come and go because InterNACHI staff doesn't run the chapters. Um, we let our members run their own chapters. So uh, there's some, let's see if I can pull this out like this. So you go to your local chapter and then you click, let's see if I can turn this on so we can both see what I'm pointing to. And then you go to um, the chapter members and you click that and you can see all the members that are in the chapter. So there's a, a really strong chapter. There's a couple strong chapters in Colorado and uh, you can reach out to any of them and see um, when's the next meeting or you know, encourage people to get together for a next meeting. So we have chapters all over the place in Colorado, in every state, and there's a, a few countries. Um, Texas is insane. They've got a dozen chapters in Texas. Um, that's really good. But we've got chapters in other countries as well. So that's one of the things I recommend. Um, if you uh, are trying to find some friendly competitors to uh, bump ideas off of, or if you're brand new, you can get some ride-along experience, right? And that's a really good idea. Um, let's see. What other states are you from? Just yell it out. Uh-oh, I may not be able to hear you. Uh-oh, we didn't set up the microphone. Wyoming. Wyoming. Ooh, unregulated state. <laughs> so you go to natchee.org slash Wyoming. In fact, no matter where you're from, you go to natchee.org slash and just type in the state. If it's two words in your state, just make it one word. So natchee.org slash Wyoming. And we've got um, some information for you about Wyoming. And I would say probably the real estate marketing cards is one of the best things. If you wanted to do radon tests, I'm not sure how much radon is in Wyoming, but we have some information about radon tests in Wyoming. And also we've got some WDO stuff uh, information for you. You can also be a commercial property inspector in there as well. So that's the difference between certification and licensing. If you're coming from a licensing state, a state or province that licenses home inspectors, that's great. But I highly recommend you get a certification from InterNACHI as well. So um, just raise your hands. Tell me how many people are going for a license in another state? One, two, three, okay. Um, a license means that um, you are, uh, you have met the absolute legal minimum to perform a home inspection. That the state says that you are competent enough to perform a home inspection. Cause there's this, there's this minimum standard that you have to meet in order to get a license. That doesn't mean that you're any good. That doesn't mean you're gonna be successful. Doesn't mean the phone's gonna ring off the hook. All that means is, for you three, is that um, you are now equivalent to anybody else who has that license. And so what makes you different from all the rest? Why would I hire you if you're just the same as everybody else? See, a license really doesn't mean anything. It just means that you've met the absolute minimum lowest bar to, for the state to legally allow you to perform an inspection. So that's a very low bar. It's a very low 
standard. That's a very low value proposition to give to somebody. I mean, why would anybody find the, the doctor who just barely passed the minimum legal requirements to perform an operation, right? So when you attain a license, you want to do what everyone else in the room is going to do. You have to become certified by InterNACHI. So you can take that license, hang it, good thing, but really don't mention it to anybody. Now it's a race for marketing. It's a race to become the best marketer. And you do that by leveraging InterNACHI's resources, business and marketing resources, like the InterNACHI marketing team. You can leverage those resources in order to distinguish yourself from all the rest. Because holding a license just means you're just the same as everybody else. So if you're in a state that's not regulated, what you have to do is attain what consumers are looking for. Uh, someone else who says that you are competent enough to perform a great home inspection. When you're new, you don't have, you lack the one thing that everybody is looking for, trust. No one can trust you if you're new. So what you do is you get a license, that's great, hang it. And then you get certified by InterNACHI and you borrow InterNACHI's trust. InterNACHI is this large organization of certified inspectors. And when you're certified by InterNACHI, you are borrowing InterNACHI's trust and telling other people, look, you can trust me because InterNACHI has trained and certified me. That's critically important when you're new and you've done very little inspections and you have no Google reviews and you have no word of mouth marketing and no one's really talking about you. That's your minimum first step is to become certified. So you can use that in your marketing. So when you're certified, then a lot of things open up, like a whole world of opportunity opens up to you. You're not just a member of this big group, you know, and a member of a chapter, you are certified. And that triggers a lot of things on our part. I'm the CEO, COO of InterNACHI, and I have got, there's 26 people, full-time staff people who are ready to work for, for members and especially for InterNACHI certified inspectors. As soon as you become certified, we get paint. We have another certified inspector and we reach out to you and we help you with resources that you may not know about. For example, there's, an, there's six um, highly creative, professional marketing consultants and illustrators. And as soon as you are certified, they're going to ask you, email you, would you like us to design anything for you? Because we're assuming you need business cards or flyers or logos or something like that. So they're going to design anything you want. You can design a, a billboard, you know, with perfect resolution or a car wrap, a vehicle wrap with perfect design or a business card, very small. That's what I recommend. Just buy a, don't go to Vistaprint. Vistaprint's a great company, but they don't focus solely on home inspectors. So you're going to get business cards somewhere. Go to InterNACHI's marketing team and all the design work is free. All you do is pay for the paper. It's really good paper, business card paper. About a hundred bucks for like a thousand cards or something, a box like that. So don't go anywhere else. InterNACHI has all the resources that you need. And it starts with training and certification. You're going to get hands-on training right now in this five-day class. And we've got certified master inspectors who run successful home inspection companies, they're gonna be your instructors. So you can, you have all these resources, right? And you want to take advantage of them. You wanna leverage InterNACHI in any way possible. One of them is take advantage of all the knowledge and skills that these certified master inspectors are gonna to present to you. And then leverage the stuff that InterNACHI, the organization provides the marketing team. There's no one in that room right now around you who can afford to hire six people just to work on marketing every day. It would be impossible. But because you're certified, you have free access to that. You can ask anybody on the marketing team, what can you do for my business today? And let them answer you. And you can include me in the email if you want. 
right? So leverage, 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 leverage. In fact, that's, you know, delegate down is a key to success. So when you are starting off, you're, you're everything. You're the inspector, you're the marketing, you're the business, you're the, you know, you do the taxes and you pay the bills and things like that. So wherever you can delegate down or create a system or a process that helps you do your business without you doing the business all the time, that's great. Internet is here for you. You know, you want to leverage the resources that we offer for free or for, um, like, like I said, a hundred bucks just for the printing for the business cards. We tr we, we try to bring everything really low, almost free for our members, especially our certified inspectors. So by the end of the week, you should be trained and certified, uh, trained, in, you know, at the house of horrors, that's fantastic training, but also certified. You want to get those, you want to get that certification, that CPI certification. Okay. And then you want to get that CPI logo and put it on your marketing. Do not use InterNACHI's logo on any marketing. You don't have to have word of mouth marketing for InterNACHI. You don't have to market InterNACHI, right? It's all about you. So use that certification logo. When you get certified, put that logo on everything. See, see that big logo behind you? It's certified master inspector, that huge, big gold logo on the back wall behind you. That. You want to maybe even think of that as a goal. Internet certification is just a step. You want to maybe get that big CMI certification, right? Don't, don't market Internet Market you. Get that logo, that CPI logo, and put it on anything. And get your business logo as well, your branding logo, your company logo. Like, I don't know, do I have a logo? I got, I got, there's my logo, right? I don't know if you've seen it before. It's the Big Ben logo. It's my fake. I do home inspections, but only in front of a camera. I don't have any clients. I just do home inspections all the time. I'm, oh, I've got about 20 home inspections to do next month in front of a camera. I'm excited about it. So those are some basic things. And to help you keep on track, I got this page. I created this page because everyone keeps asking me, can you make it simple? Can you give me some steps to do to become successful, including training and certification? And how do I get experience? And, you know, I've never done any kind of marketing before. I don't even know where to begin. What's my next step? So go to nachi.org slash everything, nachi.org slash everything. You can write this down too, or you can just email me later. Email me later, natchedorg slash everything. And I thought I would go over these steps. I made 15 steps, but really the first five are the critical ones that I like to go over. Unless we have other questions. Because I'm really, I, I'm, I'm interested in answering your questions. I can go on and on. I do this all day long. I teach all day. But does anybody have any questions? Maybe we can just hit a question and then run off of that. If not, we can we can do the first five steps. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Um, so you said at the end of the week that we would be certified. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, does that mean like we still have to do the online training, get through all of the, I don't know, 15, 20 courses there and this class or is it either or? Okay, G great question. Great question. So on natcha.org slash everything, I'm going to answer that question natcha.org slash everything and go to step two. Step two is getting trained, certified and licensed and getting experience. So if you click step two, I'll, I'll answer the question in this way. There's a link that says become a certified home inspector and attain the CPI credential and certificate. So if you click this link, this is how you get certified by the end of the week in six steps. And I'll show you those six steps and they're fairly easy actually. You don't have to take a dozen courses. I'll show you what that means in just a second. To become certified, there's only six steps. Six steps to certification. Again, natchi.org slash everything. Natchi.org slash everything. Step two, you click step two. You scroll down to the link that says become a certified home inspector. Now we're on a page with six steps to certification. One of them is, pass an online exam, 
Second one is you join InterNACHI. We switched these two around because you don't have to be a member of InterNACHI to take the exam. It's free and online and open to everyone. A lot of people take it just to see how they are. Join InterNACHI, complete the Code of Ethics course, the Standards of Practice course. You have to do four mock inspection reports. If you're at the House of Horrors, you do them there. And then you sign your agreement. Then you're certified. Once you're certified, you have to take more courses to graduate from a college. The InterNACHI school is a college. It's, a, it's the only home inspector college on planet Earth. There might be another college, some other planet. And we enroll you in that course to keep that standard really high. And so there's that dozen extra courses that my friend there just mentioned. That's after you become certified and you have an entire year or more if you need some extra time to complete those courses. Don't worry about that at all. What we want you to do is complete the six steps and you can do it if you're in the five-day class, you can do it by the end of the week. That should be your goal. By Friday morning, you should come in with your CPI certification certificate if you can print it out if you're in a hotel or something like that, right? Print it out and bring it in. So the steps are, you take the online examination. You have to take this exam. Everyone takes it every three years, by the way. You have to take this examination and pass it. If you don't pass it, no one knows. It's a secret. It's in your account, membership, uh, internet membership account. No one knows. And so take it. And at the end of the exam, it'll tell you where you're strong and where you're weak. So it's very good. It helps you want to get certified, but also gauges where your knowledge is. Then take the code of ethics course. That's like a 15 minute course. Standards of practice course. That's like an hour course. And then you have to write for pretend. We call them mock simulated fake inspection reports. Inspect something like a home. If you're in a hotel apartment, you can inspect that because it has all the systems. If you can get to the heating system, that'd be a great hot water tank. If not, maybe... Wait until you're in front of the house of horrors and write four mock inspection reports using our checklist. So we have a free online software, essentially. I wouldn't use it for your clients. It's not that beautiful. It's really just for these simulated inspection reports. So because we're a college accredited by National Accrediting Agency of the U.S. Department of Education, a real college. We have certain requirements, and one of them is you have to prove that you can write a report, and four of them are required. And you can inspect your home four times. You can inspect your friend's home four times, your parents' home, your neighbor's home, the house of horrors four times. You have to inspect something four times and write a report about it. And you can include pictures or not. It's okay. So do those six steps by the end of the week. And so like, I don't know if there's any games on, I don't watch basketball or baseball or something, but like try not to dive too deep into sports this week or any Netflix shows and just try to hit that certification mark by the end of the week. And the, there are six steps to become certified. And then the rest of it comes later and your entire education team, another half dozen professionals, all about education, they can help you through that. Yeah, one more question, Dan. All right, so follow up on that. So you do the six to get certified. Yep. How are you supposed to do a mock inspection if you haven't taken the coursework below? Right. Like, how would I know how to do that? Yep. Good question again. So if you, um, this, this is assuming, this is certifying an inspector. So if you don't know how to perform an inspection, right, you probably won't pass the exam and you probably won't be able to even write a report, right? So this is your certification mark. This is that not low standard, but high standard. It's difficult. There are six steps that we make it simple, but, you know, writing four inspection reports, that's difficult. If you don't know how to do it, there's your dozen courses. You take these courses, right? If you don't know how to inspect the plumbing, we've got the plumbing course for you. So you can kind of like jump ahead, take the plumbing course 
come back and perform those four mock inspection reports, being fully knowledgeable. So we never ask you to do something you, you can't do without providing those resources. So if you wanted to perform an inspection, you feel totally inadequate, you have no idea what's going on, well, you won't feel like that by the end of this class, but you're totally, uh, you still you know, feel uncomfortable, that's okay. Take the exam, figure out where you're weak, take a course that's related to it. The exam will tell you what course to take in order to strengthen that weakness. You take that course and that will fulfill part of that big requirement after you become certified. So that's what I would do. It's okay to perform an inspection on your own using our checklist. You can, you can write as many mock reports as you want, right? And mess up, just totally mess up. Let me show you what these checklists are. You can do 10 of these if you wanted to as practice. So you can take courses, follow somebody along that you met at a chapter to get experience, inspect your kitchen 10 times, you know, using the checklist, try to build that confidence, that, that knowledge that you gained in all the courses, and then try to get that experience so you can hit out these mock inspection reports. And as soon as you submit them, we'll, we'll mark them off as four marked or mock inspection reports, part of your certification is done. But you can keep going if you wanted to. You can add as many mock inspection reports as you wanted to. So like you just click this button to continue with your inspection. And I, right now I'm on the exterior. So I click the exterior and I'm inspecting and I don't see any defects or there was no problem here. You can drag a, a picture in there. Um, maybe you're looking at the house of horrors and you see a minor defect and oh, I got a little defect here. There's some wood rot at the bottom of the front door. And you could take a picture and upload it like I did there. Representative number of windows. Um, oh, I found um, a major problem, right? There's, there's a large crack in a window. And this is giving you experience of observing the house, inspecting the house, learning how it works, and then um, putting it in words where there's no risk. And if you're really bad at electrical, like, oh, you got to the electrical part, right? Here's the electrical part of the thing. And it's like, it's asking you about the service drop and you have no idea what that means. Yeah, that's a trigger. You got to go back and go to the electrical course right here. Uh, where's the electrical course? There, how to perform residential electrical inspections course and learn about what a service drop is. So all of, all of what you need in order to become certified is on that page, six steps to become a certified home inspector. And while you're in the five-day class, man, you are combining this online stuff with hands-on experience. That's like the best, you've got the best training going on right now. Take full advantage of it. And if you're thinking of, if you're missing something or something's not working out in your head or, or in your experience, feel free to ask anybody there or me. Um, I, I, I love helping people through it. Love helping people through it. Those are good questions. By the end of the week, you should be fully overwhelmed by your certified master inspectors who are, who are going to overwhelm you with a lot of knowledge and then experience in getting that checklist, stand in front of an electrical panel, right? Me with some other fellas in the, in, in, and do we have any ladies in the room? No. Nope. And like hitting that electrical panel. I have inspected this. I don't see any, deep. oh yeah, I do. How do I write melted wires at the breaker connection, you know? And then you turn to Lon, Lon's going to be one of your instructors and say, you know, how do you, what, I see aluminum wiring. What do I say in my report? You know, so take advantage of the, the hands-on experience that you have. Then pound out those six steps to certification. And if you feel weak on something, you don't feel like you're confident enough to write a report, figure out where you're weak, strengthen it with an online course that's free. Yeah?
Is that good? Okay. Anything else? Yep. I was wondering about the uh, written assignments that we've been doing uh, as part of the, the examinations. I've never gotten feedback back. Like I get the email confirmation saying we've received it, but then no feedback whether I'm on the ball or not. Okay, good question. Well, um, there's, we use AI. Uh, there's about, uh, I would say 500 essays every day submitted. Um, when it got to about a hundred, we didn't have enough staff. And so we incorporated AI. Uh, AI uses it and makes sure that um, it meets a very low fourth grade, I think fourth or sixth grade level English. Um, sometimes, you know, AI is right. Sometimes it's wrong. Um, it's comparing things. You know, AI is incredible. It's comparing all the essays in the in the past. So if you're writing something, it'll, it'll look it up and compare it. Um, and then if there's ever a problem, uh, human eyes look at it. And also we do about 20 to 25% of all the essays at random. So there's a human eye doing about a quarter of them, one out of four. And also any problems that pop up that AI says, oh, this person is just, you know, they're talking about, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know, going on vacation in Hawaii instead of writing a report about electrical panels. So um, there's no feedback for you. AI just reviews it to make sure that you are meeting the criteria. Writing a few sentences, I think there's a minimum number of 50 words or something, that's a few sentences. Um, uploading a picture and um, uh, it's not gonna re report back to you whether you have correctly identified solemn aluminum uh, branch wiring or not. Um, it's not a home inspector. It's just looking for a good essay. Yeah? So if you're writing a report, right? How do you know that your report is good or is it sucks? You know, oh, my report sucks. I, or, or is it good? Or is it easy to read? Is it clear to understand? You have no idea. We have um, certified master inspectors who have put up their sample reports. So you can take a look, you can take a look at some of mine and uh, there's like a dozen other reports. And you, you, you look at what they say about aluminum wiring you know, an electrical panel and you, they have provided free, there's no copyright. So you can just simply copy paste if you wanted to, I wouldn't do that, but, you know, take a look at how they write about the condition of the roof when they see a flashing problem and incorporate that into your inspection report. Right. And that's what the essays are all about. Every course has an essay or two. And so if you're in an electrical course, you're going to write one or two essays about electrical, and that gives you experience in writing actually narratives for your mock inspection report. It's all kind of connected. So the more experience you have in inspecting and writing, the better you will feel and the more confidence you'll have when you actually have a, a fee paying client paying you $500 on a Saturday morning to do a home inspection. That's the greatest feeling, bringing home 500 bucks in four hours. I don't know about you. That gets me excited. Any other questions? Raise your hand if you have a company name. Are you willing to share your company name out loud? Now, know your house. I will see. That? Know your house. AJ, are you there? Can we get a microphone? I can't hear it. Is AJ there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's can't uh, hear know your students. house. Know your house LLC. Know your house. That's excellent. That is excellent. That's a great. That's a great name. It's not like the boring uh, Sherlock Holmes or First American Home Inspection stuff. Know your home. That's actually essentially what you're doing. That's the perfect, perfect. Uh, uh, it's spelled K-N-O-W, right? Not no. K-N-O, knowing your home. You are a storyteller, right? And you are, we are essentially educating our homeowners about their home so that they know how their home works. They know what a defect is and how to fix it. They know how to maintain the home, right? And I think maybe it's time to start talking about saving home energy so that they know what to do about home energy. You know, throw some insulation on the attic door or something like that. 
Oh, go ahead, fell it in the back. Yeah, what's the, what's the? So my, my business is Brinkin Inspection Services out of Wyoming. R-I-N-C-O-N? R-E-N-K-E-N, R-E-N. -E That's your Brinken. last name? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Ben. Awesome. You've got two advantage. You've got one advantage and one problem. An advantage is it's unique name. And if you give it to the marketing team, they can play around with the R and the spelling of it. If you have a, like a letter logo, right? And you can pound that into your potential clients and real estate agents, you know, oh, we're going to call it Brinkin, right? The problem is, uh, I can see you're, you're as old as I am. And you may be thinking about how do I end this all on a good note? How do I sell this company, right? I sold my company. Maybe you can start thinking about selling your company and it's your last name that you're selling, right? So you've branding, you're branding your company as you. And if you really want to step aside and let someone else take over and they have a different last name, you know, it, it could be kind of strange, right? They're, 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 they, may, they may not want to buy a home inspection company that's not you know, named after their name or something like that, right? So you have an advantage. You're, you're unique, but in the end, like in five, 10 something years, how are you going to let it go, sell it? So there could be a disadvantage at the end. My company name was Peach Inspections. Uh, Nick, founder of Internet he is my brother. We started it. We thought of something crazy, Peach Inspections for Pennsylvania home inspections, right? Peach Inspections. We're not in Georgia, you know? We're not in the South. We're not in California. I don't know where they grow peaches, but it wasn't anywhere near Philadelphia. So Peach Inspections, it's um, soft. It's effeminate. Most of the people that we worked with, 90% of all of our jobs came from real estate agents who are 90% women, if not more. So we wanted to not be aggressive, male, uh, domineering, large, even though I'm a large fellow, 6'3", 250, we came in soft, right? So it was really just a marketing kind of thing. So, and it really worked. Peach, we had big pink peaches on our vehicles, kind of like soft and fuzzy and sweet. Right. And we did this stuff, you know, and we approached things like without pulling any punches. And it, and it seemed to like we smile every time we have bad news. Right. So it's all about it's the this is the fun part of um, running a business. Starting off, what am I going to name it? And actually, I have a really great resource um, that we wrote. If you go to our education page, let's see, how do I get to the education page? Any natchi.org page and it says get started and you go to training and education, that's our education page. If you scroll down and you type in business, there's a course called the Home Inspection Business and Marketing Course. And if you're interested in taking this, I know, I know you're taking a five-day course right now, but this is a really good course because it actually goes through... Um, Step by step, it asks you questions like, uh, are you ready for this? <laughs> like, are you, do you have what it takes? Oh, there it is. Do you have what it takes? Right. It goes through a series of questions like, let me, let's, let's just tell you what you're about to do. You're about to do a lot of work on your home inspection business. Right. And we don't want you to make blundering mistakes. Like you want a good solid name, like the two names we have, know your home and rink and inspections. Right. But there's also other things like, are you ready to work from home? Um, do you need a legal advice, a, a, someone who can set you up legally and how to choose your business name? There's chapter seven on how to choose your business name if you don't have it in name yet, right? So we can work through about just thinking about how to develop your business step-by-step -step processes and getting things set up. Hey, man, let me listen here. Sorry? We lost you there for a second. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Well, there's that home inspection business and marketing course. Anything you may be weak on, I'd just skim through it. I wouldn't take it. You don't have to take every course. You can just skim through and find resources that you need in, in courses. So in chapter seven, it's all about the marketing name. And then there's uh, one of our highly talented marketing team members, um, Chris. He's going to talk about naming your company. 
like naming your company 101 in a short video. There's some really good resources um, you have out there. Any other questions? Because we can, we can go through, I've got a, like 20 more minutes. We can go through those steps. I want to get you to a point where you can start making money, okay? So let's just go through those five steps. Those are great questions, but let's go back to the five steps and just yell at me because I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna leave. If you need me, you gotta yell at me, okay? I won't be able to see you. Okay. What's that? I'm breaking up. Aww. I'm not sure why. You're freezing and breaking up. I'm freezing and breaking up. On my side, I've got uh, Google Fiber. I'm, I, and I'm hardwired in. And on my side, everything seems to be great. Uh, Walt online says everything is fine. Yeah. We, got so some, maybe... we got some pretty nasty storms rolling in over here. Okay. Okay. Are you hardwired over there? It seems like the recording is going to be fine, but if you just want to keep going. Okay. Let's just keep going. If it's in and out, that might be okay if just in and out. Okay. So I'm going to start at nachi.org slash everything. nachi.org slash everything. And that's where you'll find those five steps that I want to go over. One, you join Internachi. Step two, get trained, certified, licensed, and experienced. I'd like to show you where you get experience. Step three, purchase inspection tools and software. You only need three to make a hundred grand. I'll show you those three pieces of uh, tools. Um, and software is really important. I'll, I'll tell you what I like. Step four is calculating profitable inspection fees. If you don't know what to charge, you're not going to be here next year, right? That's essential. It has nothing to do with what your competitor is charging. Nothing. Step five, about getting your jobs for free from Internet G because you have a website. So I'm going to skip step one because you're all members of Internachi. And we talked about the resources that you can leverage. Step two, step two is getting trained, certified, licensed, and experienced. We already talked a little bit about licensing, that unfortunately, it doesn't mean a whole lot, right? It's really what, what you, when you attain a license, what that means is you have to start marketing now. We talked about taking the online inspector exam. It shows you where you're strong and where you're weak. And I showed you, if you're weak, it'll tell you where to go. It'll give you a link to a course. It'll make a recommendation, take this course. You need to take this course. And you take that course, right? And that course will also help you fulfill that graduation requirement from the school, the college. You can get some a home inspector licensing and certification information from every page. We have every state page or province page or country page. So um, if you're in Wyoming, it's natchiorg slash Wyoming. We talked about the six steps to become a certified home inspector. There's a link there. There's six steps to become a home inspector. The folks who are in the five-day class right now, they should be certified by the end of it. Take InterNACHI's free online introduction to home inspections course. I would recommend this after you become certified and you still feel like you need like an overall picture of the home inspection process, especially about defects, because you've been through the house of horrors, you've inspected your own home 10 times, but you haven't seen all the defects. Well, like what is, what are all the other defects? Maybe you're in a perfect brand new home, right? You no know, defects, you want experience in defects and you can't get to the house of horrors? Take this course, the introduction to home inspections course. It goes over common defects, like oh, um, how about the, the various types of cracks in masonry, in structural masonry, and in residential home. I'm not just talking about brick veneer, but CMU's concrete block units, um, or uh, poured concrete foundation walls, the various types of cracks, and how to evaluate them. And you either tag them as major defects or just something to monitor. And if it's a major defect, what are you going to tell your client about fixing it? That's in this course. 
okay? Or if you have a drip at a faucet, that's in this course too. That's very easy. But it's really the, the difficult things like moisture intrusion in a basement. How do you, how do you make recommendations on, you can, you can find those problems, but what do you tell your client about, mm, you, should, you know, it's probably this, you know, like your gutters are just clogged and they're overflowing or something like that. And the, or the downspout diverters are not working or the sump pump is not discharging or the, you know, that goes over. It's a really good course, a really good course. And then if you wanted more confidence, you wanted to be with someone, hang out with someone, find someone near you who wants to volunteer some time or maybe even pay you for as a helper or maybe some ride-alongs on a Saturday morning or something like that, you go to the nachi.org masterclass. It's InterNACHI's masterclass for home inspectors. And there's a link there. And it jumps you right to a chapter called Get Experience, Practice Inspecting, Ride-Alongs, and Mentoring. And so if you wanted any of those things, if you wanted to practice inspecting or you want to find some mentors in your area, it goes over those, uh, it pr uh, provides you those resources, okay? So I would take some time in doing that. We also recommend this simple step process. Inspect your home 10 times and then inspect your, your friend's home or your neighbor's home. Your neighbor might be a real estate agent. That's funny. And uh, do them for free so that you have no legal obligation. You're really just tell them like you're a new inspector or you're a veteran inspector and you're just honing your skills. Everybody, in my, this is the truth. Everybody in my neighborhood, this is a, I'm in a new neighborhood. Everybody knows I'm a home inspector, right? And I love to inspect. I don't know what is going on with Raleigh basements. They're all wet. And everyone is having, it rains down here a lot too. Everyone has a weather event. And so I'm doing inspections for my neighbors. And I ask them, hey, can I, can I do some selfie videos, right? Everybody in your neighborhood should know that you're an inspector, whether you're new or a veteran inspector. And they should be knocking on your door whenever there's a roof leak or a skylight leak or a plumbing leak or a contractor's coming over and someone needs to oversee them or something like that. Everybody should know. That's part of marketing, right? If you can't market to your neighbors, if you can't tell your neighbors who you are, eh, you're going you're gonna to get over that. You have to get over being shy. Forget that, right? You have to have about 30 people, your neighbors, who know you and are gonna talk about you. Like think of them as ambassadors for your business. They talk, they speak well of you because they know you. Otherwise, you are alone. You're totally alone. You're gonna to have to, that's costly in your time or even your money, like running Google ads. So if you can get past the uncomfortableness of telling other people who you are and what you do. You teach homeowners about their homes so that they know how it works. They know how, uh, how to maintain it. It's a great name, business name. I really like that, know your home. Okay, that's a resource, right? Uh, step three is purchase inspection tools and equipment and software. And let me see. Four. It wasn't three, it was four. These four pieces of equipment <laughs> made me a lot of money. So I got a flashlight, GFCI tester, a voltage leak tester, and a six in one screwdriver to open things up. You don't even need this, actually. Let's put it down to three. You need these three. If you want to make a lot of cash and make a great living, you need to buy these three. And this is probably a hundred bucks because it's high lumens, LED. That's a lot. This is 10 bucks and that's 10 bucks, right? You have to invest a little bit to make a lot of money, a lot of cash. Those are the only three that you need. Actually, you don't need any, there are no tools listed in the home inspection standards of practice. You don't need a ladder. You don't need an infrared camera, moisture meter, it isn't in the standards of practice. You don't need to open anything with this six-in-one screwdriver. You don't need to use a GFCI tester 
right? You can test the button, the FCA, AFCI and GFCI button. You don't even need a flashlight. The word flashlight does not appear in the standards of practice. So don't worry about exceeding the standards of practice with tools. Any home inspector who uses a flashlight is essentially exceeding the standards of practice, right? So you can argue with that. Um, a, lot of, a lot of home inspectors on blogs are going to like, well, I would never exceed the standards of practice. You do when you use a flashlight. So we're already breaking that rule. And that's okay. Kind of like having a, a license as a minimum, the standards of practice is a minimum. And clients are going to expect you to exceed them. And the more money you make, the more cool tools you can have. Tools. So here's, some, here's a couple of tools. This is the infrared camera and a moisture meter and they're companions, they go together. One helps the other one. You can't do one without the other. And this is a, a gardening tool. It's a three-tine hoe to help me probe around and, and look for uh, wood destroying organisms. And this is a moisture meter. This is actually a moisture meter. Gives me a signal when it feels something is wet, you know? And it, it's extendable. And all of these make me a better home inspector to the point where I'm overwhelming my clients with incredible value. You can provide really good value with a flashlight, GFCI tester and voltage leak tester. But when you get to other pieces of equipment, then you're thinking about providing overwhelming value. In my company, we bought infrared cameras as an investment and we didn't buy the cameras. We allowed our clients to buy it for us over a year. We just increased our prices and allowed our clients to buy our equipment for their inspections. And we became, in that move, unique in my little area. There weren't inspectors using infrared cameras back then, right? There's still not a whole lot of inspectors using infrared cameras. That may be one way you can distinguish yourself. If you hold a license, now you're certified, and it's all about marketing, the general rule in business is you want to overwhelm your clients with incredible value. And if they're overwhelmed and they're only paying you a little bit of money, that's a good decision, right? If the perceived value is much greater than the cost, then they will hire you. So when you look around in the room and you've got 12 other people competing in your market area, it isn't about the license. And frankly, it's not about the certification anymore. It's all about communicating value specific to the clients that you're targeting. Maybe you want to be the educator home inspector so that people know about their homes. So you kind of niche your marketing message in that way. And we have a marketing team who can help you with those words. But maybe you also provide a home maintenance book so that people have more information, even more information on how to maintain their home. And you can maybe schedule not just a home inspection, but the next year's maintenance inspection. So now you're not just scheduling one inspection when someone calls you, you schedule two. Or maybe you're the person who assures people everything's going to be okay, and you schedule a home inspection and also a pre-closing inspection to make sure everything's okay, especially for first-time home buyers. We have a first time home buyer logo. You could attend to pets, homeowners with pets moving, attend to kids. We have a, a monster inspector certification. You can be a certified monster inspector. So you go into the bedrooms and look under the beds and you look in the, the nooks and crannies of the closet and we have a door hanger. And so when you're done inspecting that room, there are no monsters in that room. You, you, hang, <laughs> you hang a little door hanger saying this is a monster free bedroom. There's ways to niche yourself so that you are providing overwhelming value to your clients that you serve. And when you can do that, then you can start raising fees. So you need the basic tools. And I showed you those tools, but then we've got a ton of other tools that you can provide as well. If you're not going to be in business very long, if you don't know how to calculate profitable inspection fees. I, I had this general idea that I wanted to make about $100 an hour, right? 
that was really stupid. I'm glad I survived that first six, seven, eight months, nine months. That was really difficult. Then we realized it's, it's more than that, right? There are expenses. We have to think about expenses. We have to think about monthly fees. You got to pay your internet team membership and then you got to buy tools and their software and that's a monthly fee. And, you know, then you've got your desired salary and you've got like rent and mortgage and bills and it's math. So you can figure out exactly what you should charge, right? And know how much, um, how much time it takes for you to perform an inspection. That's the other piece of the calculation. And remember that home inspection business course, chapter 11 goes through two inspectors, Inspector John and Inspector Mary, and they're trying to figure out, chapter 11, trying to figure out what to ch charge for their fees based upon their particular things. They're trying to figure out how much, how much to charge in order to be profitable. And so they go through the math step-by-step. Step. And I, I highly recommend going through chapter 11 of the Home Inspection Business Course and going with these two inspectors and doing the math. And then you do the math. And then you know when your phone rings, this is profit, baby. When you, my phone rings, it's profit. It's going to pay my bills. It's going to give me profit. It's going to allow me to go on vacation, right? When I when the phone rings and I'm like, hello, this is Big Ben Inspections. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm on the roof right now, but I can uh, schedule your inspection next week. You know, the $500 inspection is just right. You've calculated it. You don't have to sweat it. It's one of the things you set up so that in the future, you know, every job is making you money. So that when the phone rings or you get a ping, from your software that an online scheduling has happened, you know it's money, money in the bank. It makes you smile. It isn't about worrying. You don't approach any home. Your goal is to, so that you don't approach any home wondering if you're gonna make it. Am I making enough money? That's the worst feeling. I've been in there, been in that feeling. It's all about math. And the Home Inspection Business Course, Chapter 11, helps you through that, okay? Um, there's other resources there as well. And then you got to get everything online. Um, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you can be a successful home inspector without a business, uh, business website. I just think nowadays, I mean, I don't go, I take my wife out every Friday night to some kind of restaurant and I check it out, check out their website. And the, the if we're going to a pizza joint, the pizzas better be on the website. I want to see what I'm getting. So when you, when you have a business, and people can't meet you before they hire you, you better be online with pictures of you. Don't make a website with a bunch of expensive houses that your clients can't afford, you know? Put yourself out there. On your business card, you should have your face. On your flyer, you should have your face. On your website, homepage, you should have your face. Here's my website. Do you know my website? Big. It's bigbeninspections.com. Again, I'm not a home inspector. I do this. I, I have this uh, website company. Um, Internet, she's found, uh, official vendor for website designs, does my website for me, right? So uh, there's my certification, right? I also provide a guarantee that's overwhelming value. This is trust and credibility. Remember, we talked about this. This is overwhelming value. And I'm telling them in a short sentence why they should hire me. Because essentially they're looking, they're looking for an inspector who's the best, right? And then, like my friend there about knowledge, I'll teach you everything about your home. That's essentially what I want to do. That is my goal. I want to teach you everything I can about your home. I'm going to tell you the story of your home, your dream home. We're going to walk through it. But you'll never, you don't get hired until, you know, you, your client doesn't see you until the driveway right? They may not even be at the inspection. So give people what they need quickly in your marketing message, in your niche branding messages, in your emails, in your website. They're looking for the best inspector in their area, and they're looking to see if they trust you. So get a website designed. And here's some steps on getting a website. You got to get a domain. 
There's a link to a domain. You got to get InterNACHI's marketing team to design a logo for you. And then you put that logo on a website. You, there are many companies out there to do websites. There's only one InterNACHI official vendor that designs inspector websites exclusively for certified inspectors. And um, it's run by one of my family members. So you know you're going to get a really good service. And you go to natchi.org slash website to get that website. Uh, you have to update your InterNACHI membership profile with your website because InterNACHI has this huge presence on the internet and we're, we're listening to or finding people who are searching for home inspectors in your area and we give them a link to your website. If you don't have a website, we can't send people to your business. So you have to get a website and then update your profile, InterNACHI profile, because people are using things like, well, if you go inspectorseek.com, like, you know, um, 2760, oh, whatever, any, any zip code. They're using InterNACHI's search engines to find certified inspectors. That's why you have to get certified. And if you have, uh, oh, this is Korean. I put in a Korean. Oh, that's neat. Let's not do that though. Uh, how about Austin? Austin, Texas. We have about a dozen inspectors in, in Korea. That's really cool. And a strong chapter. So let's go to Michael, Michael's listing here. Let's see if he has, yeah, he has his website updated in his internet profile, HPP inspections, the performance promise. Wow. Very good. Uh, the first thing I thought of was like uh, Italy. I saw this architecture here, but I guess it's, I don't know where he is. There's no city. Oh, there it is, Austin. There it is, Austin, Round Rock. So this must be in Austin. This must be the Austin Capitol building. If I live there, I would immediately recognize this is Austin. However, no one's inspecting these commercial properties. I'm not, I'm not buying the Capitol building. I'm looking, I'm not looking for a picture of my town. I know where I live. Michael, you don't have to show me where I live. I know where I live. You have to show me what I'm looking for. What am I looking for? The Capitol building? Mm -mm. I'm looking for the best inspector in my area. This doesn't mean anything. The performance promise. What is the promise? Uh, conducting home inspections the right way, giving you confidence in how you perform, how your home performs. Everybody can say this. Everybody in that room at the House of Horrors at the end of the week, we'll be able to say, you're committed to conducting home inspections the right way, giving co you confidence in how your home performs, and there should be a period there. Um, don't say anything that anyone else can say. Remember, you want to niche yourself. You want to be different from all the rest. You don't want to be the same. You don't want to hold the same license. You don't want to be proud of the same certification. You want to be different. We have different certifications for different inspectors in different areas. And you want to say different things. Having a picture of Austin on a home inspector website is a mistake. You only have a second to, con to convince me that I need to hire you. And telling me about a performance promise that everybody can say is not that, right? So what you need to do is put a picture of something that catches my attention. Hit me like a boxer in the first round. Hit me right in the face. Give me your best shot because you don't have all day. Don't say anything that anybody else can say and don't give me a picture of something that I'm not interested in. Give me a picture of what I'm looking for immediately. I'm looking for the best inspector in my area and make it clear that I found the best inspector or give me the reason why, it's called a value proposition. Give me the reason, main reason why I should hire you, right? Okay, if, you're, if you need your website critiqued, um, I, I can help you with that as well. Uh, and then you add your zip codes to your home inspection business profile. You can add it up to 10. And then you get a Google business profile. Google owns the internet, right? So you need to put yourself online with a website that's recognized or listed or indexed. It's called by Google. So when you do a Google search, right? Let's go, um, uh, home inspection in. Raleigh. Oh, did I do that right? In Raleigh. Up on top, 
like you can, you can get on the very top of page one if you wanted to. Do you have the money? You can run a Google ad. It's easy. But that shouldn't be your goal. Your goal is to just get listed with one of these links here. Like you can get on Yelp as a citation. You can get an internachi to recommend you, right? But you need a website first. You need it designed well with the right words. And the internet marketing team can help you with that. Don't run a Google ad. Because if that's your goal as a new inspector to get on page one, you're going to be doing that for a few years. Because you don't have any Google reviews, which is essential to get on page one. And you, Google doesn't even recognize new websites. They're not even going to look at you, really. They'll index you, but you're not going to show up. They love old websites. They are current, constantly updated with unique information specific to your area and service, and they want Google reviews. So your goal isn't to be on page one. Don't go down that road. Don't listen to anybody who has that service for you. It's not going to happen. What you're going to do is you're going to market yourself with your website on your marketing pieces, like your business card. And you're going to give these things to clients like your sample home inspection reports or your maintenance book with your website address on it. And they're going to visit your website and decide whether to hire you or not. Don't, don't start with trying to get on page one with organic Google searches. It's going to be a long haul. And that's not your goal. Your goal is to make money. And there's a way to make money. It ain't through quietly trying to get on Google search ranking. It's to actually get out there and market yourself. Leverage InterNACHI's resources about business and marketing and start marketing yourself. Door to door, handing out. Take the business course. It'll teach you about marketing. All the, I think there's 100 things you can do to market yourself. Not one has a goal of getting an organic search ranking on page one, because it's very difficult. That shouldn't be your goal. There's a lot of companies that are going to actually say the opposite, that your goal should be get it ranked on page one. It just so happens that they charge a lot for that service. <laughs> See the connection? Don't pay any money to try to get on page one. Get a decent website. Start making money with the three tools that you need. Bring home $500 on a Saturday morning and really enjoy being a home inspector because you have taken full advantage of InterNACHI's resources. You're trained, you're certified, you got some experience, you got some confidence. Now you do marketing, which is a lot of fun. And on and on. And at this point, you can start making money as an inspector because you've done that, those first five steps. There's a lot more steps you can do if you wanted to, but these first five steps are critical to get the ball rolling, make money. That is your ultimate goal to make money and make a great living. If, if you wanted to make a good living, you wouldn't be in that room right now. You wanna make a great living and make a ton of cash. And that is the point of being a business and taking all the risk and doing all the work. So make a ton of cash. You can do great things in the world after you make a lot of money. You know, give, donate, charity, pay, go on vacation, things like that. But you gotta make the money first. And I think you're in the right spot. I'm passionate about this. You're surrounded by InterNACHI staff, 26 people who are dedicated to helping you. These are good folks that help home inspectors become successful. And you're going to have a really great time in the next five days because you're going to meet some really great certified master inspectors who are your instructors and they care about your success as much as possible. So utilize every resource that InterNACHI has. And I'm always available. I'm on the contact page, but you can always email me. Don't call me. It's very difficult to, to get me on the phone. Email me. And it's ben at internachi.org. Any last questions? Yeah. So I was, in, uh, I was chatting with Spectora about the website built. Is yeah. that different than what you just explained with the marketing team? Or is that all driving together? Spectora builds good websites. I love them. Um, they're a software company. 
and they integrate their software with the websites that they build. I have Spectora software on my phone, but um, I would compare no matter where you go to. There's a, there's a lot of software companies out there to design websites because they kind of can go together. But the way that they can go together is through embedding widgets. The one main thing that your website must have is online scheduling, like Big Ben inspections, right? Big Ben inspections. And if you go to schedule now, my scheduling now button, this is Spectora's widget so that I can schedule an inspection on my website. And I like it, InterNACHI's official vendor for inspector websites because they can design a website for me. And that's at nachi.org slash website. So get a website designed by InterNACHI's inspector website builder.com, inspector website builder. Go to Google and, and search for inspector website builder. Go to inspector website builder.com. That's InterNACHI's official vendor for inspector websites. They design the websites. Go to Spectora or some other software company and embed their scheduling widget, ask for it. I want my scheduling widget code and you embed that code onto your website. That's my recommendation. Any other questions? Yeah? Okay, I'm on the contact page. So is everybody else. And my email is ben at internachi.org. And that website was natchiorg slash everything. If you need anything at all, it can be overwhelming. But if you need anything, just to shoot some ideas or to find some additional information, I'm available, okay? <laughs> so I'm good? Susie, so you gonna answer any of those? What's that? Hey, you just ask him about the questions in the chat, if you were gonna address those. Oh, the chat? Uh, questions in the chat, yeah. it looks like it's on there. Okay, I can barely, AJ, I can barely hear you. We gotta get that, that fixed. Kevin on the chat says, is there a resource to find my certs ancillaries I need state licenses for? Yes. So um, go to, uh, the example was um, Wyoming, natchez.org slash Wyoming, or go to um, your state, like natchez.org slash New Jersey, and it's one word. And it'll give you that state-specific information. Every state is natchez.org slash whatever. Um, Marcel says, after taking courses like air quality, where do you go to refresh the course without retaking the course? Um, you can take um, the course over and over again, if you wanted to. You can take any section over and over again. It'll give you a little check mark, check mark, right? And then when you take the exam, you get a certificate. And if you wanted to take the exam again to get a better score, you can. And if you wanted to go back into the course and redo the course again, you can do that as well. It's open. It's called a, a asynchronous e-learning course. It's always open and accessible at any time. And it's not sequential. So you can just jump in to any course, take a little bit out. You know, you go to any section of any course and just take that, learn about that section of the course and go to another course. You can take and retake any courses. So it's all available, all open, all the time, no additional fees or costs to internet team members. Um, rephrase, how can I review some items of the course like electrical and others without, you don't have to take the whole course again. You can just go into, um, Marcel, you can just go into any course and retake that course. It's all freely available um, at any time. So if I go to get started, training and education, and I go to how to inspect an attic course, and I start the course, whoop. I can go to um, the attic section, all right? And I learn about the, inspecting the attic, and then I go to the exterior section, and I learn about in, inspecting the exterior, and I can go, go, go back to the attic section. So it's you can go sequentially by clicking the, the buttons on the bottom, or you can just click around and jump around, like 
why should I recommend air sealing? Not just insulation. Um, let's see, after certification, any suggestion, Jim says, after certification, any suggestions on getting some real experience before going out on your own, like riding along with someone? I think we did that, right? It's in the master course. It's um, natural.org slash everything. And then if you wanted to get experience, it's step two. And then it's um, this link here, InterNACHI's masterclass for home inspectors. It'll jump you right where you can get experience, practice inspecting, ride-alongs, mentoring, all those resources about finding chapters, finding mentors, finding certified masters and inspectors in your area and joining a community, community online. Um, Franklin asks, what is a good way to get involved with realtors? For me, I fed them. Uh, my company name was Peach Inspections, so I offered the office manager to sponsor um, a weekly office meeting. They're still, they're having them now. Um, and I would feed them just for one month. So it's not a long commitment. Office managers don't want long commitments. So you can just do one or four. And then um, we brought in warm, fresh peach pastries because my company name was Peach Inspections. And don't forget the forks, knives, and napkins. Um, real estate agents don't want stuff on their shirts in the front or the dresses. So um, bring napkins. And then I put flyers and marketing cards and little gift certificates um, for a discounted on my ancillary inspection. I never discounted my home inspection, discounted my ancillary inspections. Um, and then uh, that's, that's how I met real estate agents. And I would go around and also deliver peaches. I'd, I'd go to the local farm, get little baskets of peaches, and then I'd, I'd travel every Friday um, afternoon, and I'd travel around the real estate offices, and I'd deliver peaches. And I would come in and I'd say, hey, you know, fresh peaches are here. And I'd try to go. I didn't go for the big 600 agent offices. I talked to the little people who never get love. Um, and so um, that my goal was to, um, and also your neighbors, you know, there's uh, 2 million real estate agents in the United States. Um, and probably, you know, there's, I don't know what the stat is, but I would guess like one out of 20 neighbors is a real estate agent. So my recommendation is to talk to your neighbors, bump into a real estate agent, and uh, you know you can hire them, right? As a growth agent, hire them. They're, most agents are not busy. Most agents don't sell any real estate. Only the top five percent do. The rest of them just have a, a real estate license, right? And uh, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and hire them to do part-time work. And they know people in their office, in their network. Um, they have the gift of gab that we probably don't, I don't have that. I would hire a real estate agent if I had to do it all over again, pay them whatever per hour, work a certain number of hours. And their goal is to find real estate agents who are interested in hiring you, um, or at least getting you um, in their network of recommended home inspectors. That's a pretty good, you know, you can, there's many ways you can get involved with real estate agents. And if you want to do a presentation, don't do a presentation for CE. Ugh. You know, nobody wants to listen to a home inspector teach real estate agents about uh, license, state licensing regulations. You know, you're, you're going off course, stick to what you do. So if you go to natchit.org slash presentations, here's some resources that you can use. These are slides you can take, like there's a slide on AFCIs. It's a five minute presentation. It's totally customized. So on the front page, you put your logo and your name and your phone number or your website address. And then you talk about the importance of AC, a, a, AFCIs in like 10 slides and you finish up with the same thing and you say, uh, enjoy your peach pastries. And I, thank you for your time. You give real estate agents some interesting information that was of value, that was perceived value, you overwhelmed them according to the cost. It was free. And you didn't bore them out, right? And you fed them. So we have those resources here in a couple of videos. Um, I teach about how to hire a real estate agent and how to find top performing real estate agents in your area and market to them. Well, actually, you don't market to the top ones. The elite ones, don't, don't touch them. I would come down a little bit. You know, you want to go above mid performing to high performing somewhere around there in your area 
And you can find, there's very easy ways to find who is, who's busy and who's not. Um, who might be interested in working for you and who uh, might be interested in, in getting uh, some fresh peach pastries. Um, it's very easy to interact with the real estate agents. Uh, jo Jose says, I have my own logo. Can I still order my business cards with your internet? Yeah. And what they'll do is um, they'll ask if you are interested in tweaking it, making it better, making it, I know it's a great logo, right? And you're, you know, your cousin probably designed it, you know, some, or, or you downloaded it from the internet or, or maybe, you, you know, your spouse is a professional logo designer, you know, that's really great. But InterNACHI's marketing team probably has a slight advantage, if not a major advantage over those folks that you asked who, who designed your existing logo. Let them take another look at it. Let them give it another stab at it. You could always tweak your logo a little bit. You're not Coca-Cola where you have to have the same logo. You can tweak your logo, you know, to make it even better. And I ask them, how, are you, how will you make my logo, my current logo even better? And let them answer, right? And if you're convinced, then you can do it. And that design work is free. They'll design that logo for you or redesign it or slightly improve it for free, right? So it's a pretty good deal, pretty awesome deal. Um, Franklin just asked, for new inspectors, how many inspections do you expect for us to get if we follow all the steps in the first year? For new inspectors, how many inspections do you expect us, expect for us to get if we follow our inspect? Oh, so how many inspections are you gonna get in the first year? Like running your business? Oh, I, haven't, I, would, I, would, I would say zero right now, right? because it's not up to me, not up to my expectations. It's up to really what we've been talking about for the past hour. To be in business, you have to take full advantage of resources that are available to you because you are not going to be able to do it alone. If you're gonna to try to do everything by yourself, even down to website design and logo design and marketing and all that stuff, uh, you're competing with people who are taking advantage of InterNACHI's resources, I bet. So what you need to do is convince yourself that you are, your goal isn't to be the best inspector. Your goal is to be a good owner, operator of a successful business that just happens to offer home inspections. You have to think of yourself as a business owner who just, just happens to do home inspections. It's like a secondary thing. You can do anything you want, but you have to be a successful business owner. That's why that home inspection and business course is so vitally important. When's the last time you took uh, a home inspection? Last time you took a business course? When's the last business course or marketing book that you read? You know? So, I would first like shift your idea into like you are a business owner that just happens to do home inspection. So you can be a really great home inspector. That doesn't mean it, anything. Doesn't mean anything. You have to do both. You have to be good at business and marketing. If you're a great inspector, you have to be good at marketing so you can tell other people that you're a great inspector. So it takes both. And um I can't predict, how, you know, all I can tell you is what I did and we were very successful. And then we took all the things that worked for our company a long time ago. And we have implemented all of the things that have worked for all internet certified home inspectors who are running successful home inspection business and wrapped it up into the membership benefits of internet And that's why you need to take full advantage of your membership benefits. Reach out to someone on staff and ask, how can you help me in my business, right? Because we don't, we don't know how much money you're going to make, but we know how to calculate a profitable inspection fee. We don't know um, how many jobs you're going to schedule, but we know how to design a website that has a scheduling widget on it. We don't know how many real estate agents are going to recommend you, but we know how to reach out to them. We know what to say when we're in front of a real estate agent. 
okay? And as a goal, okay, so Franklin says, but as a goal, it's all about math. So go to chapter 11 of the Home Inspection Business Course. And if you want to set a goal, you can figure out how many jobs exactly, how many jobs you need to do in order to reach your financial numbers, right? If you need to, if you have a desired salary of $100,000, it's going to be very different if it's $200,000, right? It's all about math. So you calculate that. It's basically your desired salary and your desired profit margin and your expenses and the amount of time that you're willing to invest. You put those four or five factors into an equation that's in chapter 11 of the Home Inspection Business Course, and you can answer your own question. You can answer exactly how many hours am I going to work? How many days of the week am I going to work? And how many jobs do I have to do? And how much money I'm going to make? And how much do I charge? It's all in math. Okay? All right, y'all. Thank you so much. That was great. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And uh, I have lots of fun at the home. Uh, the House of Horrors is a lot of fun. I, I really, I think it's just a, a unique experience and take full advantage of everything that's available to you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.